I'm Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are Wonder Bus Adventures. This week we will be focusing on our back end. First we wire a two way lighting circuit and show you how we did this. Then we made a bunk suitable for Lily and other tiny humans. And begin enclosing our bunk house and bedroom. Please like and leave us a comment. The next thing I'm going to do is wire up my light switches. For our main living lights, we're going to have a switch at the door and we're going to have a switch at the back. And we want to give the ability to switch, obviously, either, either on or off at either end of the bus. Uh, and to do that, it's quite straightforward, but to show you in the bus would not be. So I'm going to just rig up on the bench how that would work. This little demonstration, you're going to need some three core cable, some two core cable, you need your lights, you're going to need switches, and you need to make sure they're single double throw switches, so on, on switches. And for our install here, we're just going to use some Wagos, and you need a power supply which should be fused through your fuse box or with an inline fuse like I'm going to use here. We're going to start from the power source forward. So I'm not going to hook up the power source yet, but this will be attached to your fuse box. Then the middle connector is going to be from the power from your battery. Okay, so that will attach in here. You can see I've just put a spade terminal on here. That's going to go on here like so. And it's using a little Wago nut. I'm just going to pop that on the black at that stage so then what you're going to do next is pop the blue it doesn't really matter which way around you do it at this stage but you're going to put put the blue on the top and the brown on the bottom okay and then this black this is going to go in here next up the front of the bus so i'm going to have a two but that these are just two two single on on switches one of them i'm going to use for this so basically I'm going to repeat the, the steps here. So on the top one, I'm going to put the blue. And on the bottom one, I'm going to put the brown. And then in the when I do finally get it in the bus, this will cable will be much longer. But for purposes here, I'm going to have my positive cable in the middle. All right, so I've got my switch at the back of the bus switch at the front of the bus. Then all I need to do is run my cable to my lights. So in this instance here on the setup, I'm just gonna make sure that the positive and the negative are going to the correct place. I'm gonna hook up to my battery. And then what you'll be able to do is switch it off here, switch it on here, switch it off here, switch it off, switch it on, on, off. And away you go, you've got your linked circuit. So in the bus now, I'm gonna hook that up uh, to my switches. I've already got my long piece of cable run for my triple core, and I've already got the power run up. To do that, I just need to hook them up. You're probably thinking, Rich, why are you faffing about with this wiring now? Should you not be building something else? Probably, but the reason I am is simple so i want to put this cover back together and to be able to do that i need to obviously cover up this end panel where this wiring is encased this thing's really handy for getting in there close it looks like a some sort of austin powers uh rocket ship thing these are the switches we've gone for cb ones i've just wired in as well the dimmer switch which we're going to have running under our cabinets because again the wiring needs to be done before i can put the back of this cabinet on i've got a fuse in that's suitable for the cable runs that we've got and switch it on and see if it works this is just rigged up down here for the time being The LED switch is just in one place. I've just got it hooked up here for now, but these are going to be underneath both overhead cabinets. And whew, turn it up, we'll turn it right down. But they work now, so I can just, I'm going to zip tie up a couple of the cables on the back, put the cover on the back, 
And then this is ready to varnish. Just taking the time to finish up wiring my fuse box as well. My label maker's still not been returned, but I've just put on some temporary ones for the time being, and that way I can screw this top on. I'm just gonna pop some P-clips on to make sure that that's all neat. Uh, why am I smiling? Well, I put two fuse boxes in here, which seemed overkill. I've got 10 spare slots on it left over, but I do know that I've got three or four more things that I definitely want to run into the kitchen and such um but for the most part yeah two two fuse boxes is more than enough maybe too much but you know we're future proofed okay it's saturday afternoon it's actually fairly warm so i'm taking the chance to get out here and do a little bit of varnishing because we want to make sure that this is all protected uh we're using diamond hard floor varnish because we've proven that putting this on and uh, once it dries you can barely see that it's there which is good because obviously you want to see the grain of it when we come to the kitchen we might use osmo oil i'm not sure yet um we'll give that a go however you're probably thinking oh no varnishing how boring and it is it's really boring um in terms of viewership which brings me on to my next point we think likely as we move into parts of the build which are a bit more boring or we're going to take a few weeks to do we won't we won't we won't show this stuff in so much detail so basically we think our our schedule of going out might reduce All right, so the next job I need to do is install, obviously the end face of this wall, now it's been varnished, and the top of the cabinet, because the bed actually comes into this area. I've been careful to measure where I need to pile a hole through, put my screws in. I'm gonna do this end first, and then the top. This end was put in with self-tapping wood screws. I did pile the hole through first as to not split the wood. Okay, so the next job, I'm gonna install the cross beams for our scorvers. Scorver cross beams from like here. I'm gonna use two across here for the single bed. I'm just gonna grab them now. And then in the end here, we need to install the bracket. See, the bed is quite wide, this one, but our area up here will be more than ample. And then underneath, we will have a little bit of room for our legs. Not much, obviously longer term, this bunk probably will come out, but whilst Lily's young and wants to share a room with us, um, and let's face it, I'll probably be sleeping up here anyway. We're gonna have this in and then, you know, if we've still got this in years to come, the idea is this can come out, this will probably come out and that will become a cupboard. And we're going to be making the living room basically into its own separate room uh, with double bed as well. Where are the brackets gone? <laughs> there they are. <laughs> right. The way these are... Uh, right, so the way that these work is obviously you screw them in through these holes here and the beams hook in to these. Uh, I'm going to use these on the other end but if I've got it right they should also rest on top of the wardrobe um, and these really are just holding them in place so we've got basically double double support on the end is the idea. All right so what I'm going to do Let's just mark where these need to go on here with pencil, pilot hole through and then screw through. I'm going to use some pretty long great screws to do it. Bar's running sturdy. I'm just going to try and get something to put on here so I can give it a test drive. 
It is a small bed, this, but like I said, I don't think it'll be something that we'll have in here forever. For a small human like me, my legs would be hanging out at the end. For a lily, this should be fine. Okay, so we have a special guest. So th whose bed are you sleeping in now? Mine. Mine. So you can see that it's, it's plenty big enough for Lil for the time being. A little bit of growing room as well. Do you think you'll be comfortable in there? Not at the moment, obviously. We're going to get a nice mattress. Yeah, I hope it will be comfortable. Not comfortable at the moment, is it? No. It will That's be. That's why there's a cushion here. It's because it was hurting my neck with the wood, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, plywood's not that comfortable, is it? No. So we're going to put the slats on, on here next. And then the idea will be that we're going to cover this back area up a little bit. Could have a porthole though, would that be cool? There's a porthole. That's you a circle window. You know, like have it on boats. Ooh. You could have one of those on the end, couldn't you? Yeah, and then I can watch the sunrise when I'm in bed, like, oh, look at the moon, look at the stars. <laughs> I'll be That'd looking be. at the moon and the stars. Yeah. Think it'll be a hit then, the bed? Yeah. These chunky pine slats came pre-spaced, but we took the webbing off because the spacing wasn't quite right for what we needed. Look, these tend to cut down now. Like I said, the beds are going to be 63 and a half wide. And these are a whopping 90 because a single bed, believe it or not, is 90 wide. Which when you think a small double is 120, you're really better off sleeping in a single bed. Well, there are normal double beds, 135. Isn't it weird how much you learn doing this stupid van build? Anyway, I'm going to cut these all down now. Broke loose the miser saw to do this and it made short work of it, even though it's totally blunt and makes smoke. Get this space first. For the most part, I can space them. Uh, basically evenly along here and then at the end we'll have them spaced slightly wider apart the reason being that'll be the foot end of the bed the slats and the bars were drilled through with a 6.5 mil drill bit i used some m6 bolts and nylock nuts to ensure they didn't work loose under vibration i'm not even halfway just using my impact driver with the 10 mil bit on the end to do this up a bit quicker but just doing this, doing anything like this on your own just takes ages because you're trying to be as you're trying to be as clean as you can be. Like anything, I guess it's worth doing. It's worth doing right. So six more to go. Let's do it. A couple of hours longer than what I thought, but it is now done. We are in, and it's sturdy as well. That's the main thing. Slats in, sturdy. All good. This area here, we're going to enclose and have a window in the middle or at the top, we're not sure yet. I've got some cheaper plywood in there and I can decide how I'm going to finish the outside because this is just going to be the outside skin, if you like. And then what I'm going to do is insulate between here and an inside skin. Today's job, and it's a big enough one on its own, in my opinion, is to get this cut pushed in and fitted. It was first cut to length then I cut it roughly to width using the jigsaw. After that I tried to get it in the van. How's it going to work? Because the doors are obviously smaller than the inside so the only way this would have worked is if I was pushing it in from the inside out but I can't do that because the bed's in the way. What I'm going to do I'm going to cut the wood in half and work at it like that 
and then when we clad it on the outside, you won't see the join anyway. Let's try that. Made this guy right when we scribed in at the top here. It's just a piece of plywood that I've spaced um, for a pencil to go through, and then I'm just using this to scribe. So I'm just gonna get down to the, not the finest of scribes yet, but pushing it into the edge so I can get this curved profile because as you can see we've curved the profile of the ceiling and we want this wood at the back to match that we're getting there it's still not quite right though is it I've got a little tiny bit more to cut off down here you can see I'm hoping that will push in at the top here we've got flex in the roof so when I jam in some sheep's wool insulation underneath that's going to bring that down and I'm going to make sure I draw around this to use as a rough template for everything else that I need to make, like the overhead cabinets and such, because it takes such a long time to make this curve otherwise, and at least I'll have a starting point then. Just doing the final scribe on this, hopefully, and then we're going to try and replicate it on the other side. And then we'll show you what we're trying to do on the inside with this, because it's not just about bl blocking it up, we're going to try and make clever use of it. Ah, this is fighting me. This side here that I know I've got good, and even though I've got it clamped and it keeps moving, so what I'm gonna do is just drill through so I can ensure that this isn't moving, because otherwise, when I cut that thing, if this has moved, then we're in a world of trouble. But yeah, this is taking a while. Van build. Okay, so that's done now. Roughly, in because it's just, it's just laying there at the moment on clamps so what we need to do now is think about how we're going to secure this piece of wood because this is going to be a foundation for a couple of other bits and bobs and as i said we're going to clad this differently on the outside and cut a window in it next part of the build we can add battens around where we're going to cut a window out and have our inside storage okay this hole here under this paint will fit an m6 rivet nut I've got several of those across the back. So I'm just gonna use those. They're not access holes for anything. The larger ones on the back, they are. Shove these in there. Um, no need to drill any more holes. some screws in here now temporary so once we've got this in we can know what we're going to build next and take it all out and varnish it basically yeah this is the bit of van build you don't usually see is just kind of stood frozen in place thinking yeah mine looks really bendy and it's bent in so i'm going to have to figure out how to Okay, the back's in, it's the first draft, we'll get there with it. This is where we think the window's gonna go, roughly. Lily's got a bit more of her bed done as well, are you happy? Yes. Yeah. And we hope you have a lovely week and we'll see you soon. One, two, three. Bye! Bye. Bye.